So you've opened your packs, built some ships, and now you're ready to set sail. In this video, I'm going to show you the start here basic rules for Pirates Constructible Strategy Game, also known as Pirates of the Spanish Main and Pirates of the Cursed Seas. So this is assuming you have a few packs worth of stuff. You've got some islands, some ships, and hopefully another player to play with. And I already built some fleets here. I'll show you the basic how to get started. Um, each fleet gets a home island. And in this case, I'm just going to set up the home islands like so. And then I'm going to have one wild island. So this is going to be a quick overview of the start here rules. This assumes you only have one pack to play, which isn't much at all. So I'm going to kind of change it a little bit. Um, just because I think the start here rules are pretty limited. But I'm going to go over it um, as I see fit. So first, let's look at a ship and see what it can do. So HMS Antelope. This one is five points. That means it costs five points towards the build total. In this case, I'm using 40 points as the build total. You can use any build total you want. You could use 13 points, you could use 65, you could use 1200. But 40 points is a standard build total. It used to be 30 in Spanish main and then they upped it um, right afterwards to 40. So 40 is the most commonly used uh, point total, build total used in the game. And that's what I'm going with here. So I've built two fleets. I have the English and the Spanish. And I'm just gonna go over the card, the rest of the card here, HMS Antelope, you can see there's things across the top. Those are basically the ship's stats. So we have the first one is a two here. So that means it has two mass. This is HMS Antelope. So you can see two different mass there. And then the next one is cargo space. So it has two cargo spaces. So this is one of the most important stats. Basically cargo means um, how much uh, crew, equipment, and or gold you can carry. So there's coins, the goal of the game is to get the most gold. So this is a coin, and then once you load it onto the ship, you would put it on the deck plate of the antelope, and then that takes up one cargo space. Let's say this captain from the other ship, this is an English crew, they give your ship special abilities. Let's say he's on the antelope, he takes up a cargo space as well. So now the antelope is full because both of our cargo spaces are taken up. This can be filled um, any way you want. You could have two equipment, two crew, two coins, whatever you want, but you cannot exceed the ship's cargo capacity. And then also, as a smaller rule, you cannot exceed the point limit of the ship with how many crew are on the ship. So the captain is three points. I'm not gonna go over all the crew abilities in too much detail, but this captain is three points. So I couldn't put two captains on the antelope. Not that I would want to anyway, but that would be more than five points because it would be six points total worth of crew. So I could do a captain and maybe a two point crew like a helmsman for five points, but I couldn't exceed the five point limit of the ship with the crew and equipment that I put on it. And then third and arguably the most important stat is the move. So this is the base move or the speed of the ship for the antelope. You can see it's S plus L and it's color coded. So basically on the back of the card, and I use this one often, this is my favorite one to use, that's why it's a little worn out, I've used it for many years. Um, on the back of each ship deck plate card, it's called a deck plate because that's where the main deck gets punched out. And then on the back you have the movements. So this is S or short, which is also white, and then you have red, which is long or L. So the antelope, you measure movement from the bow and you would start the game docked at your home island. You put the bow of the ship, the front of it, not the stern, docked at the home island. And then if I wanted to give HMS Antelope a move action, I could measure either the S or the L first, and then I would measure from where the bow touches the water, which in this case is basically like right here. So I would measure, and you can lie the card flat on the table, however you want to do it. And you can measure from either side of the hull. You can see there's the two sides of the hull. You can measure from either side, as long as it's where the bow touches the water. But then you just want to be consistent during that move action and move it from the same spot for each segment. So the antelope has two move segments. So I can move it this way. And then when you move it, you pick it up and you turn it in the direction you want to go. So now the ship has a new heading. So now it's going in that direction. And then it has, says S plus L. So then I can move another L. So then I have the second move segment here. 
So once again, measuring from the bow and then pick it up and then it can change direction with every move segment. So now HMS Antelope has, given, has been given a move action and that's her action for the turn. And then let's say this ship was right here and HMS Antelope was already right there. I'm gonna try to shoot at the Spanish ship. So I've got two 4L cannons. The L means long. See how they're, they're red? Basically that means it's a long range cannon. HMS Gibraltar on the other hand has two S cannons. So they're rank two, but short range. These ones are rank four, but long range. So the rank means what the die roll you have to roll is, has to be higher than the rank. So in HMS Antelope's case, the 4L, I'd have to roll a five or higher to hit. So the lower the die number, the better. That means the cannons are more accurate because you have to roll higher than that to get a hit. And then you can see the cannons on the antelope. You can see their 4L marked on there, so it's very convenient. So let's say I was shooting at this ship. I'm gonna measure, you basically measure from where the, the die is on the mast, and you, you can measure to anywhere on the other ship. You don't have to measure to the other ship's mast. So you could put the card down like this and then see like that, and then you can, and then masts block line of fire, and so do islands and other ships. But let's say I'm like right here, I've got this cannon in range, and I've got this cannon in range, both both 4L cannons are in range. So let's say I was gonna shoot, and then I would roll a two, and then see so I have to get a five or six. So I got a two and a one. So basically both shots would miss in that case. And then usually a ship will have an ability, so I'll show HMS Gibraltar. The Antelope is one of the rare ships in the game without an ability, but most ships have a special ability of some kind. So this one is able to dock at an enemy home island and load a treasure. So it's basically a home island raider. So you can't normally do that. You're not allowed to dock at enemy home islands. And also you cannot shoot at ships docked at their home islands. And there's some base, there's some simple rules that I might miss in this video too, but I'm just trying to give a quick basic overview of the start here rules in general. So I'll demonstrate the different actions, um, but let's get started. So I have HMS Duke of York over here. So this one has, this one is a good gunship. I'm not gonna go over how to build a fleet in detail here, but I know this one is a good gunship because it has two L cannons. So th those are the best guns you can have in the game, rank two, long range. So they hit on a three or higher. And then it has a captain, a helmsman, and a fire pot specialist. So I'm just gonna have these the fleet set up here I'm just gonna, sometimes for simplicity, you might wanna have the ships dock at their, the island, make the home island the closest one to them. So I'm just gonna do that for this simple tutorial. And then I've got the Spanish fleet over here with El Agua, which is the Eagle, and El Corazon Dorado, which is a four-masted schooner. So both, both fleets have ships and crew totaling 40 points total. As long as it's equal, you can use any build total. So I'm gonna start the game here very shortly. You can use any amount of gold coins. Um, WizKids calls for basically each fleet to contribute eight coins worth uh, 15 gold, but I'm not really, I don't really like that rule very much. And the start here rules call for um, what you have in your pack, which is not very much. So I'm just gonna put eight coins out on the island here so in this game, it's really simple. There's only gonna be one wild island. Usually there's at least two or more. Um, in a two player 40 point game, you'd have four wild islands and two home islands. And then, so I've got both fleets here and now I'm gonna roll to see who goes first. So this is the English die roll to see who goes first. So they got a five and then the Spanish got a one. So the English are gonna go first. So they're gonna take the first actions of the game. And then on the back of the start here rules, it says, take your turns with your opponent. Each turn you can choose one of the following actions for each of your ships. So that's extremely important. All your ships can be given an action on your turns. You don't have to just do one per turn. So there's four actions. There's move, explore, shoot, and repair. Move is by far the most common, and that's what I'm gonna be doing here on the first turn. So the goal is to get the most gold. So I'm trying to get the gold here and bring it back to my home island and then whoever has the most wins at the end. So HMS Duke of York, um, she's got 
base move of L, see if I can keep the crew. Oh, no, they go on already. <laughs> but basically, this ship has a base move of just L, but then I have a helmsman crew, which gives you plus S to your base move. I'm just gonna keep the crew down there so hopefully they won't fall off. So a helmsman is two points and you get plus S to your base move. And another thing real quick is there's a no stacking rule. So I can't put two helmsmen on the Duke of York to get plus S plus S. I can only do one. So abilities don't stack. You can't get the same ability twice stacked on the same ship. So, so the Duke of York, measure from the bow, set a new heading, I move L. Another random thing, check out how the distances are a little bit shorter than the card. So make sure to measure um, from this end to that end but without the little extra overlapping on the card. Same with the S there. So the Duke of York moved L, and now she's gonna move S because she has a helmsman. And since, since the Spanish ships can't be shot at since they're docked at their home island, um, the Duke of York can't go attack them yet. So, And then the next ship is HMS Gibraltar. The ship is really fast. SSS base movement. So I can move three S's in one turn, in one action here. And it's natural for the move uh, segments to not be completely perfect, but that's totally fine. And then HMS Antelope is the final ship. No crew, no ability, just a basic ship. Um, this is kind of the primary gold runner in this game to some extent. So she's got S plus L base move like we already saw. So now the English turn is done. I've given all three ships actions. All of them were move actions. And now it's time for the Spanish. I'm just going to move the crew ships over. This ship, the Eagle in English, is a four-masted ship, five cargo, L move. The cannons are pretty good. And then it's got some crew on here as well, including a helmsman, just like the Duke of York. So that means she gets plus S to her base move. So I'm going to move this ship first. And she's going to go over here. And this, this setup is also kind of unrealistically close. You probably wouldn't want all the islands quite this close unless you had more of them. Because um, in this case, whoever goes second almost has an advantage in a way if they have a captain or whatever, which this one, this ship does. So the eagle moves over here. So she's got L move and then plus S with the helmsman. And now I have a captain as well. This is probably the second best crew in the game after the helmsman because speed is extremely important and helmsmen are useful to both gunships and gold runners but the captain lets you move and shoot with the same move action normally you have to shoot separately so a shoot action you have to be in range first and then you can shoot but in that case usually the other ship will get you first but that's why a captain is so good so in this case the Aguila moved and now she can shoot as part of the move action. It's a little confusing, but basically the captain allows you to do both with the same action. So it's still the Aguila's move action. I'm gonna shoot at the end of it, and now I'm going to measure the cannons. So the Aguila has 3S, 2L, 2L, 3S. So I usually measure bow to stern, and then I just go ahead and roll to see what hits I get. So this one's in range. So you just have to measure from the mast to any point on the other ship, even the flag, any part of it. You don't have to measure it to the other ship's masts. And then this one is L, this one's in range as well. This one's in range. And then this one looks like it's, yeah, this one's in range as well. So, and like I said, measure from where the, the, where the die is on the mast. So you might not be able to quite see it there, but basically that 3S is also in range of the Duke of York without overlapping any of her own masts. So I've got all four cannons in range, I've got my captain, and I'm ready to shoot, and I'll go about a stern, like I said. So the first cannon is a 3S, rank 3, uh, short range. So I got a 1, so that does not hit. And then I've got a 2L, so I need a 3 or higher, so that doesn't hit either. And then I've got another 2L. So this one hits, so that's a 3. So on the 2L cannon, I rolled higher than the 2, so it hits. And then I've got a 3S at the, at the stern here. So that hits as well. So I missed the first two shots, and then I got the next two. So now the Duke of York loses two masts. So you lose a number of masts equal to how many hits were scored um, during the shoot action. Or in this case, the move with the shoot at the end. And then the Duke of York, so I lose these two masts. 
you generally want to take out the masts which are the least effective. In this case, the Duke of York are all 2Ls. If the Eagle was losing mass, I would take out these back and front ones first because the 2Ls are the best cannons she's got. And then, just for making it realistic and for taking pictures and doing battle reports, I like to put the masts uh, where, they, where they fall in the water, essentially. I'll try to zoom in here a little bit. So that was a that was an e and a decent shoot action by the eagle, and now the Corazon Dorado is the other Spanish ship here. This one has S plus L speed, no helmsman though, so no speed bonus. She's got some crew as well, but we're gonna check those out later. So the Corazon Dorado is gonna move here, so she just moved S plus L towards the Wild Island, and I can check and see that none of her cannons are in range. So the Spanish turn is over. So now it's back to the English, because the Spanish, they gave all their ships actions, and now they're done. So the English are next. They are going to double back with the Duke of York here. She's going to move L in this direction here. And then looks like she can just barely get back to her home island. So the Duke of York is going to go back home because she wants to repair those damaged masts. But she also has a captain, just like El Aguila. So she can move and then shoot as part of the same move action. And then the Duke of York also has a fire pot specialist. Which, let's see if I can get my equipment bag out here. So a fire pot specialist is a crew. This isn't as basic, but basically... You can set opposing ships on fire with the right crew and or equipment. So in this case, I do have a fire pot specialist on the Duke of York. So I'm going to shoot as part of the move action. And I'm going to use the fire pot specialist with the 2L cannons. It's definitely in range. So I'm going to go ahead and roll. Hopefully it'll be in the shot. But it's a 5. So I did hit the eagle. And the eagle loses a mast, and since I'm using the fire pot specialist with this, with this cannon, now the eagle is on fire. Which is cool, because the fire can spread, so it's pretty bad for the Spanish. And then, the next ship I'm going to give an action to is HMS Gibraltar. And then this one has S plus S speed, plus S, I should say, 3S. So I'm going to move all three S's, and then I'm going to move to the bow of the Corazon Dorado. And then I've got both 2S cannons clearly in range, pretty much point blank. And this one has a captain as well, the Gibraltar. So she's going to be able to move and now shoot at the same time. So she's got 2S cannons, so I need a 3 or higher. So that's one hit. And then that's the second hit. And sometimes um, it'd be good to have more table space so the die rolls can actually roll a greater distance. But in this case... It's not a, the outcome of the game doesn't really matter anyway. So, so the Corazon Dorado got hit twice. The Gibraltar succeeded with both shots, and now the Corazon is down to two masts remaining. Now, for the final English ship to be moved this turn, or to be given an action, she will get a move action. The Antelope over here, she's going to move and dock at the island. She's got plenty of speed for it. But she doesn't have an explorer, so she can't explore until next turn. Exploring is a separate action, which I'll go over next turn, it looks like. Alright, so the English had a solid turn. They set the eagle on fire, and they took masts off the core zone. It's getting pretty, pretty tense action here already in the game. And now it's the Spanish turn. So they're going to move. They're going to do the eagle first. So this is a little more advanced in this video. But um, basically, if you have a fire mast, you have to roll for every action the ship takes. And one or two, it spreads. Three, four, no result. And five, six, um, you put it out. It's extinguished. So they got a five. So now the, the fire is gone. So that's nice. So they put out the fire, the fire mast. And now um, they can't shoot at the Duke of York because she's docked at her home island. What they can do is go go attack the antelope, potentially. So they're going to do that. I'm going to move L and then S there. And it looks like got all the cannons in range here. Yeah. And sometimes it helps to look over the setup and whatnot. 
to make sure that they're in range. And now the Aguila is going to shoot again, so 3S. So she's shooting as part of a move action against the antelope, that's one hit. This needs to be higher than a 2, that's another hit. And then if this is a 3 or higher, because of the 2 out cannon, um, the antelope will sink. So yep, so the antelope sinks. So three hits. So the antelope, realistically, basically um, the mass would be out. And then once the ship is derelict, it has no mass remaining, it sinks. So the antelope is gone. So the English are down a ship. And then the Corazon Dorado still has to be given an action here. And you can you can uh, you can not give ships actions if you want, but that's almost never happens. It's almost always optimal to give actions to ships. And the Corazon Dorado wants to go home to repair, but I think she's going to take a few shots at the, at the Gibraltar here first. So she's not going to move her full action. That's another thing. You don't have to move the full, the full S plus L. You can move partial, you can move half S or, or whatever. You can move any along this distance and you can move partial L too if you wanted to. But so she's just going to move right there. She's got both cannons in range, and she also has a captain. Um, most of the ships do in this game. In the setup I did, this is a named crew. Uh, this is also a little more advanced for this video, but Duque Alfonso de Castilla, he has the captain ability along with crew elimination. So if the ship succeeds with at least one hit, it eliminates a crew on the enemy ship. So it's like a crew killer, crew eliminator. So it's a very good ability. So he's five points total. Three for captain, two for crew killing. And then I've got a musketeer here which gives the Corazon Dorado an extra 3S cannon that can shoot from any mast. That's three points. And then the Oarsman on the Corazon Dorado is kind of just insurance. So if, if an enemy ship boards um, the Corazon and succeeds, the Oarsman could be eliminated before the more important crew. And Oarsmen also prevent the ship from becoming derelict. And when the ship has no mast, it can move S. So it's basically you're rowing along at just S, which is really slow, but... Orthmen are, I think they're a little underrated. They're they're still a decent crew, and they're only one point, so that's key. So the Corazon has got two 3L shots, and then via the Musketeer, she's got a 3S. So the 3L I'll do first. So that one didn't hit. This ship does have a reroll ability. So once per turn, you may reroll any die roll you make for the ship, and then you have to use the second result. So she's just going to go ahead and reroll that first shot since they're all rank three. Okay, so that hits. So with the re-roll, that hits. So that was still the first cannon. And I've got the second one, 3L. So that one misses. And then I've got the Musketeer, which is a 3S. And that one misses as well. So the Gibraltar is hit once. So I've heard two masts. Now she's only going to have one left. And then via Duque Alfonso de Castilla's second ability, the captain of the Gibraltar is killed in action. So he just gets eliminated from play. And then the Spanish are done. So they had a good turn. They sank an English ship and crippled another one, taking out a mast and crew on the Gibraltar. And now it's the English turn again. They're kind of struggling now. Um, so the Gibraltar, the Gibraltar is going to be given the first action. She's going to be given a shoot. Now that her captain's gone, she can't move and then shoot with the same move action. So I'm just going to shoot the 2S cannon at the Corazon. And it doesn't hit. And then the Duke of York is going to... I think she'll repair in this case. Because if she goes out to take on the Eagle, she's almost definitely going to lose. So she repairs a mast at her home island. So that's the repair action. This one is probably the easiest to understand. Uh, it's the last one here. You can replace any mast on any ship that is docked at your home island. So, And then there's also a shipwright generic crew for two points, which allows you to repair at sea or at any island. So the English are done. Didn't have a very exciting turn, but they're losing they're losing stuff here. So now it's back to the Spanish. Um, the Eagle is going to move L and dock at the island here. And the Corazon is going to she's gonna stay in place and just shoot. I'm just gonna do a basic game here. So the Corazon, same as last turn, she's got three shots at rank three, so so that misses, and then that misses, and then I've got the Musketeer. Whoops. And then, I don't know, you can call interference if it's bad, but in this case, I'm just going to keep the result. So the Gibraltar loses her second mast, 
to the Corazon. And that's the Spanish turn. So now it's the English turn. They're going to repair the Duke of York so she's ready to go because she might have to take on both Spanish ships at the same time. And this ship is kind of, uh, or this game I should say, is a little bloodier than your first game might be. I'm using a lot of captains. And you could use no crew in your first game to, to get the basics down before you start adding crew. And then, so now it's the Spanish turn again. Actually, the, the English are going to scuttle HMS Gibraltar, so if you have a ship that's derelict with no mass remaining, you can give it a free action to scuttle it, and then if you get a 5 or 6, um, the ship sinks automatically at the beginning of your next turn. An opponent can still tow it to capture it in the meantime, but a 2 is not a 5 or 6, so it didn't work. And now the Spanish... Alright, so I finally get to see an explore action. I thought I was going to see it earlier with the antelope, but she was sunk already. So an explore action is basically you can, when you're at an island, you can explore the island. When you do that, you look at all the coins privately without showing them to all the other players. And then I'm just gonna spread them out here because it doesn't matter too much. And then you look at all the coins and the highest values are the ones you want in general because that'll win you the game. Whoever has the most gold wins. And then the other important thing is cargo space. So on the Eagle, there's three crew but one of them doesn't take up a cargo space. So you've got, so this is five cargo, and then these two take up space. The oarsman does not take up space. So even though there's three crew, there's still three cargo spaces open because these two take up space. So now I have room for three different coins, and I see a zero, which is kind of rare. <laughs> That's a funny one, but I don't want that. So I see some threes and four. So I'm gonna take these three coins, and then you put them face down on the deck plate of the ship next to the crew. And in this case, I have the crew off the deck plate, but, but normally they would be on there. And then any coins that aren't taken are put back face down on the wild island. So now you've explored that island. And also you could put a, uh, an explored marker. So I like to use the pennants, these little flags up top. I like to use those, they're color coded by faction. So I would put a Spanish one there to show that I've explored the island. And then if any other friendly ships dock at the island, they can explore it as a free action. They don't have to, they don't have to be given a separate explore action. So with that, um, the Eagle has used her action for the turn to explore. And then the Corazon is happy about uh, dismasting the Gibraltar here. So she's gonna go ahead and capture her. So to tow a ship, you move um, any part of the ship that you're uh, towing with to the bow of the ship you want to tow. So in this case I would initiate contact there at the bow, the front of the Gibraltar, and then as a free action you can move the ship behind you. And I'm planning to do a complete game rules uh, tutorial as well um, to go over some of the other concepts, but anyway, so I'll probably talk about capturing and towing more in that game. But the ship has to be derelict, so you have to have no mass remaining and no oarsmen in order to tow it. But the Gibraltar is derelict, so the Spanish capture her. And then you would move it to the other side. So now the Gibraltar is part of the Spanish fleet. So anything on board can be used immediately in favor of the Spanish if they want to. So now it's the English turn again. And the Duke of York's going to move towards the Spanish home island. Because if she moves towards... I don't think I'm going to be able to get all my cannons in range of the Eagle, so I'm going to try to set myself up to intercept the Eagle on her way home. So that was the English turn. They're down to just one ship. The Eagle is going to come home. And she does not have any cannons in range. I'm looking at the L, 2L cannon there. It's not in range. And the 3S is not either. Uh, one thing about when you're towing an enemy ship, though, the Corazon Dorado is going to be given a move action but the base move is reduced to just S when you're towing. So she can't use her full base move. So it's reduced to just S basically. And then, but if you did have a helmsman, that bonus would still count. So you'd be able to move S plus S, but she doesn't have a helmsman, so she's done. So that's the move actions. Now it's back to the English. So they're gonna try to intercept here. And I'm going to use the keyword on the Duke of York because the English are probably going to lose anyway, so they're just going to go for broke. Broadsides attack, not a very good ability, but basically uh, it's, it's not a very simple ability, but 
you shorten all the ship's cannon ranges to S, and uh, they all have to be in range. All remaining masts have to be in range, which in this case they are. And then uh, you have to roll a die roll higher than any of the ship's cannon ranks. So in this case, I just have to roll a three or higher, so it's not too bad. If the ship had a rank four cannon, even though the others are rank two, you'd have to roll a five or higher. So broadside's attack is better with rank two cannons like I've got here. So the Duke of York is going for broke and, and it didn't work. So that's not surprising. So broadside's attack didn't work. And it looks like the English are definitely gonna lose at this point. They've already moved. So now it's back to the Spanish. The Eagle is gonna come around and it looks like she can just dock. So this is what I wanted to see here. So now that the, the Eagle is docked at her home island, she can unload these coins as a free action. And usually you wanna keep them face down. In a two player game, you can unload them face up. That's not a rule I usually like to use. But the Eagle has unloaded gold at our home island as a free action now that she's brought it back. So now the Spanish are in the lead with 10 gold total. The English don't have any. And then the Corazon is going to move S because she's towing the Gibraltar still. Now she's got all three cannons in range though. I'm not going to shoot with the Eagle here because the game's almost over anyway. And then, so the Corazon has got three rank three cannons in range. And then she's got reroll as well. She's got one hit, no hits. Okay, so two hits total, and then I'll re-roll, I'll re-roll the miss there. So she gets two hits on the Duke of York. So she's, the Duke of York has repaired, but now she's already back down to just one mast. And then on the English turn, the Duke of York would probably move here and maybe use broadside's attack again, which misses again to try to dismast the Corazon Dorado. But, and then Broadside's Attack, you score an extra hit for how many masts you have left. So if I had three masts and Broadside's Attack was successful, you would score four hits instead of three. So, but it missed. So now the Spanish are basically going to win. So the Corazon Dorado would move maybe here to try to block the Duke of York from going back home. And then she would roll um, her cannons and then the Musketeer hit. So then the Duke of York would have no masts left. And that's generally the game. So it's kind of a rushed ending, but I didn't want this video to be too long or super detailed. Like I said, I want to do a complete game rules video. So basically, the game ends when all gold has been unloaded to home islands, or, because that hasn't happened, obviously, or um, only one fleet remains. You can use, like, half, half or more of the players have no move actions left to give, but I like to play until either all the gold is unloaded at home islands and it's safe there, um, or... Uh, like I said, when one fleet's left. So the English can't do anything else, so the game ends. There's no, like, simulation rule where the Spanish get the rest automatically. That's not how the game works. Um, you can use it as a house rule if you want, but the game is over as soon as the Duke of York is derelict. She doesn't have an oarsman, so, so the game is over now. So now the Spanish, you can see they've won with 10 gold. And then the English, they lost one ship sunk, one ship captured, and... The Duke of York, despite her best efforts, was unable to turn the tide and has been dismasted as well. So the Spanish with a crushing victory. Um, so this was just a general tutorial of the start here rules. I'm sure there's a few things I missed, but that's basically how to play the simple version of the game with a little bit extra added on. So. Like I said, the start here rules assume you only have one pack, so I'd recommend getting at least three packs or more between two people to start playing. Um, especially to have an equal build total, because if you have one pack, the build total is almost definitely not going to be the same, and it wouldn't really, wouldn't really be a proper game. So it's best to start out with like 30 or 40 points, build a fleet, and then start playing. So I hope to do more videos soon. And like I said, I'm planning to do not only a complete game rules overview, but also I'd like to do a keyword playlist. So I'm gonna do be doing more tutorials soon. So thank you for watching and have fun.